There we go. Hey, Ryan. Hey. Can you see me? I see you. <laughs> David, ah! you're a dinosaur. I am You didn't a dinosaur. tell me this. I know. Try, trying to make, bring your work here. It's David Stark from Watcher Pass. Today I'm joined by Ryan Dodson, a dinoteer and stunt performer for Jurassic World Live, which has been touring the country and is coming to DC at the Eagle Bank Arena from March 23rd to 31st, 2024. I'm going to talk to him right now. And while you're watching, if you can like and subscribe to this channel, that would be fantastic. I'll start a lot. Thank you. All right. Oh, I just wanted that for the intro. I can't do the interview like that. Oh, all right. Oh, okay. You're you're a human. Okay. Just Whew. that was really hot. You okay. know, David. <laughs> I Hey, spent how's my it entire career looking for dinosaurs, and you just gave me a little PTSD flashback there. Um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I see my friends I get eaten all the time. I don't. I don't want to start the interview that way. That was my bad. My bad karma. <laughs> Let's start on the right foot. <laughs> awesome. You good to go? All good. All right. So thanks so much for joining me today. I've got Ryan Dodson, a dinoteer and stunt performer for Jurassic World Tour Live, which is coming, which has been touring the world and it's coming to the DC area from March 23rd to 31st at the Eagle Bank Arena in Fairfax, Virginia. It is a kind of recreation of your favorite scenes from the Jurassic series. It has 24 true size dinosaurs for you to marvel at. And Ryan is one of the performers that makes this happen. I am very excited to talk to him. So thanks so much for joining me. Hey, thanks for having me, David. Of course, of course. So I guess this is kind of a homecoming for you. I, I know you spent some time in D.C. I don't know. I think it was like four years at least working. I don't know if you'd spent here before, but uh, I guess welcome back. Well, this is my home. This is where I went to school. This is where I went to work. This is where I spent most of the first part of my life. So I love D.C. It's my favorite city in the United States. Uh, yes, I'm a little biased, but it's also very beautiful. I've been taking my castmates around this place uh, like pretty much like two of two of the three days we've been here and um it, it's been amazing That's awesome. And this is the perfect time. You came right when cherry blossoms are blooming. This is like fantastic timing. right <laughs> it's almost like you planned it timing is epic yeah exactly <laughs> so i i love the story i found an article about you uh on the internet i love your story of how you got to this job it is very unconventional so i'd love to hear more about it like just how did you get to become a uh, are you a dieteer stunt performer both I, I i saw both i wasn't sure which one uh your actual title is but how did you get to this show um well Tell you what, I, I had a very strong desire to uh, do something athletic with my life, um, you know, because being a natural born athlete, I have the tendency to want to just like be active constantly. And it was my dream to get paid to be active and not be paid to do something behind a desk. I mean, nay, no offense to people who work behind a desk. I think it's a great way to support yourself, to get great benefits, to support a family. Uh, but I don't have a family yet. And so me being uh, in that position, uh, you know, working uh, out of a desk for about four years, I, I really wanted to just like see what I can do, you know, explore the unknown. Right. Um, that's what life is all about for me. Anyway, I want to explore the unknown. What can I do? I want to push myself to the next level. And so I became a professional wrestler for a year. Um, and through that becoming a professional wrestler, um, I had injured. I went down for about three months and uh during my injury i found the jurassic world live tour audition in the city i was in uh so i just decided just for laughs i'm just gonna go i didn't expect to get it because again my hand was all wrapped up in a cast i didn't think they were gonna choose me but i just went there and i put forth my best effort and seven months later They called me and of course I said yes, because this is what I wanted, whether it be professional wrestling or stunt performing. I wanted to be paid to be an athlete and I wanted to put on a, a good show for people so that the, 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 the kids can just take home and talk to their friends about it and get inspired by it and maybe want to grow up to be a stunt performer themselves. So, yeah, I just wanted to touch the world uh, with my natural born abilities and not let it go to waste and regret my life 25 years from now so that's kind of the short story of how i got to where i am now For sure, for sure. And uh, yeah, I read your story and I was like, man, that sounds amazing. So you know, a moral from your story is like, do this kind of cool stuff when you're young, because you don't know, like, it might actually work out. You probably never thought that you would actually be touring the world as a stunt performer for this show, uh, you know, five years ago, but you just took the risk. You uh, you jumped on that opportunity and, and here you are. That's amazing. Absolutely. And also the other moral is have good friends. I, I read that your friend, like, 
convinced you to do it, helped you do your resume, drove you like two hours to the audition. Like that is a good friend. That is an amazing, you know, connection that you had. <laughs> Shout out to Alex from uh, Griffin, Georgia. Yeah, that's the guy. That is, that is awesome. That is the guy. So I, I, you know, this seems like it was on a whim. I can't imagine you thought that you would be doing something like this when you were a kid. You said you wanted to be athletic, but did you ever think you would be kind of like a performer in a, a big show, something like this? I imagine you probably thought you would, you know, be playing sports or, you know, train or something, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I thought maybe I would do things like hobbies. You know, I would play football with my friends or flat. I, I played uh, softball in front of the White House for uh, the time when I was part of my uh Back in my corporate life, we had a corporate softball team, which, by the way, we won the championship both years I was on the team. Maybe I had something to do with that. I don't know. Yeah, you, but, know you can't you can't argue <laughs> with those results, right? <laughs> yeah, but um, th that that was the like the that, that was the full length of what I thought I was going to be doing athletically. Just oh, corporate softball team. Oh, just you know for fun. But no, um, there was there was definitely more to explore, and I was already in my thirties at the time. So, just so you know, uh, it doesn't matter what age you start. Just start. As long as you have good knees, I have good knees. I have great yeah, that knees. Is, great that is that is key. If you've been an athlete your entire <laughs> that, life and good knees, key. that is the unicorn. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and yeah, I think I'm a little bit too old to do this, but hey, you know, maybe we'll see. Uh, you never know. If you want it, you can get it. <laughs> that is a good life story. Um, so you know, I imagine being around other you know performers and dieteers. Is there any kind of commonality between you all other than maybe like loving being active? I'm just kind of curious how, you know, like if you're a kid that's going to the show, how they can maybe start to build these skills that you would need to kind of do something like this. Um, it's going to take um, a, a, basically a mindset shift. Um, whatever you're doing right now, um, you have to make a bit of a sacrifice because I did have to sacrifice to get here. Um, so if you like to eat junk food. Or if you like to spend your look, I love video games. I love sitting down and watching movies. But if you can incorporate stretching or working out while you're doing these things, that would because you're building your strength almost passively. That's kind of how I kept my flexibility over the years. Um, you just got to kind of add it into your lifestyle and eventually it'll start to take over. Because right now I don't have time to do anything other than just be in the best shape of my life. Um, and to eat right and to do all these things that uh, you would expect a stump performer or former pro wrestler to do. Um, so you really have to just like write down all your goals and then make little tactics on how you're going to get there and then break that down into daily uh, activities that you can do to get there. And I wouldn't be where I am right now if it weren't for me just constantly keeping my body in the best shape ever since I've been, I don't know, maybe 11, 12 years old. Um, and then once I became uh, prepared to do this, oh, I took it to the next level. Uh, I don't even know what it's like to be gas. I've never run out of breath in years. I don't know what that feels like. <laughs> like people try to blow me up, <laughs> you know, out there in the ring, or maybe to take me through a hit workout. Hit is a joke to me. I need something more advanced than hit at this point. So I'm going to invent a new workout that's more advanced than hit because I just don't get tired anymore. And that's, that's the truth. That is that is awesome. And yeah, imagine how, you know, in shape our youth or our world would be if you had to like be on the bike while you're playing video games like that. If you had to like actually power it like that's that, that, that's an amazing invention. It's probably not going to take off, but I, I love the idea. <laughs> yeah, I'll pop a squat or I'll start dropping down, doing push ups at the airport. I don't care, you know. That's awesome. No, yeah, keep active. I, I'm probably going to start stretching while I watch movies because that seems my flexibility is not what it used to be. So that seems like a good thing to incorporate. So I guess, you know, what is your day like when you're performing? I mean, is there any, uh, it says like, you say, you say you don't have much time other than to like stay in great shape. And I imagine do your job. Is there, you know, what is a, a regular day when you're performing the show look like for you? Um, I wake up, I warm up, uh, like as soon as I hop out of bed, just get up, get moving. That's the first, that's like my mantra in the morning. Um, and I don't sleep very long. I know it's going to sound kind of crazy with my active lifestyle, but I sleep three and a half, maybe four and a half hours a night. Oh my gosh. Um, that's six amazing. is a little much. I start to get I start to get a little sore if I'm in bed more than six hours. It's crazy. But four to four to five hours is like the sweet spot, right? Um, yeah, get up, get moving. I do like 50 to 60 and sometimes 70, 75 push-ups in a row. Uh, I do my abs, I do my legs, whatever, jumping squats, Hindu squats, all kinds of squats, um, all, all types of ab crunches. Uh, so I do my workout, it's a little warm-up. Um, and then I fast, I don't eat anything until lunch, right? So I'll have and it, it's crazy because most athletes can't do this, and I'm pretty sure this is bad advice for most athletes, but for me personally, <laughs> I can fast. I can wait until one o'clock or maybe two o'clock in the afternoon to eat so i warm up then i go to the arena 
Uh, usually we're in the walking city, so we can just walk straight there. But um, yeah, I go to the arena, do a little more warm up there because we have a pull up bar. So then I can start doing my pull ups. Um, and I don't use weights. That's the other thing. I, I can't stand weights. I think long term, they're probably bad for your joints. Um, so I just keep it calisthenics. I keep it hit all the time. Um, so basically I have two workouts. Um, then I get ready to do the first show. And right after that first show, okay, this is why I fast. Because that first meal is incredible. After a morning of just <laughs> not it. eating anything and being active, man, it tastes, you know, food tastes so much better when you are starving. So I eat. Um, and then we just get ready. We do the second show and we do the third show. And then that's it. We go back to the hotel. I might do a little, um, I might get some dinner. Um, you know, I like to eat one to two times a day. Uh, I know being this active, again, not the best advice for most athletes, but for me, it just works. Um, I believe in longevity. And I think the, the, the less calories that we consume on a daily basis, the less our bodies break down uh, due to the digestion process and all that and less free radicals. So that's more of a like health and nutrition uh, thing that I usually get into. I don't want to go too far into that. That's more of a tangent, but yeah, uh, just a meal or two, uh, work out two to three times and just have my shows. And that's pretty much what it is. And after that, I'll probably find a nice uh, little bar to go hang out, get some mocktails because I don't drink alcohol. So I'll be mocking it up in there. I look like I'm drinking. Um, my vibes are very, um, I, I, I feed off the energy that's around me. So I might appear to be drunk when I'm actually not at all. <laughs> That's, I mean, no, I, I love, I love this uh, idea. You almost like a warrior diet, right? Like you don't eat until two or three. That's around sundown ish in some places. So that and it works for you. That's awesome. I, I can see like after this show, after you, you know, do a bunch of shows, some sort of like Instagram or YouTube show about your, your workout crazes and your diets. And that'll be kind of like the next phase in your life, which I'd love to see. I'd love to hear more about it. Hey, I'm obsessed with that stuff. So I wouldn't mind sharing. That's awesome. Uh, so you you also mentioned in this uh, story I read that you spent all of last year touring the world. Uh, you're back in the States touring here. What has been your favorite place to to visit, to see, to perform? What has been like the most interesting or, or beautiful place you've been to? Well, um, we have other than D.C., been... of course, right? Other than, you know, beautiful D.C. <laughs> yeah, beautiful D.C. Um, I would say so. We actually use mostly the United States, uh, the United States and Canada. So we went, um, I would say Vancouver. If I'm, yeah, I think Vancouver was such a beautiful place. And um, once we, I mean, that's the first time I've ever been to the uh, Pacific Northwest. And just coming down from Vancouver down to Washington State and then of Oregon and like taking that, and we took a bus too. So just seeing the mountains and just seeing the, the, the wind farms, and it was just like, wow, dude, I've never seen anything like this in my life in person. Of course, I've played GTA San Andreas, you know, yeah, all that stuff, right? But when you come and you see it in person, it's like a different planet, you know, like to, yeah. to be in such an environment. And the weather, I mean, I love the dry heat. It is just beautiful. Uh, so when we got down to Phoenix, oh, man, it's really hard. Now I'm coming up with all these great cities it's hard for me to say, you know, Vancouver, I, let's say I love all these cities equally, but differently, just like I would say about my children, if I had any. That's that, that is a good answer. You got, you got to keep it open, right? You don't know where you're going next. You don't want to pick a favorite yeah. just yet. Uh, so what has surprised you most about, you know, this whole endeavor, this, this Jurassic World live tour, like being a stage form, what has surprised you most about it? Other than the fact that you can do all this stuff and only eat twice a day and sleep four hours a night, because that is insane already. But what else has surprised you most? Um, what surprised me is the amount of uh, love that we get from the crowds. I mean, we were walking down the street after a show one day and uh, some of the lead actors were, you know, just going back to their hotel. And uh, I guess one person spotted them out and called them by their character name. And they just, you know, it was like a big crowd form. And I was like, wow, that's incredible. Um, because I didn't know just how, uh, like, I guess how universally loved um, that this show would be um, because I've always been, you know, I've, I've loved Jurassic Park, Jurassic World, but, um, you know, just getting into this and when it became a sort of a job in a way, because it becomes a routine at some point, uh, you forget, you forget how how important this stuff is to people because you're, you're in it, you know, like before I got this job, it was oh my God, this is going to be huge, right? And then I got the job and then it's like, okay, now I'm in it. I'm going to get better. I'm going to improve myself every day. I'm not thinking about how big it is. I'm just thinking, I just want to continue to put on the best performance. Uh, but that was that was the moment where that crowd of people, I think we're in Anaheim, uh, where they started to crowd us, where I realized, oh yeah, this is, to them, this is still huge. 
you know? So th I think that's what surprised me that it became a bit of a job until that moment. And I'm really like, okay, I have to keep in mind and stay grateful for the fact that I'm, I get to do this and people really love to see us do what we do. And that actually made me better. My next show, my next few shows, I just had this uh, newfound energy about me um, when I took that cage jump and some of the stunts that I do. So yeah, man. That's awesome. I was going to say, as someone who feeds off of people's energy, that must have been invigorating for you to kind of get a sense of how much people love it. And it must have, yeah, like you said, fueled you for your next shows and probably for this whole tour, because I can imagine going from place to place is fun and exciting, but also, like you said, it can kind of get you get into a routine and you don't re realize how special this is. Mm -hmm. There it is. Awesome. So I know we have limited time. I'm going to switch. So I call it the lightning round. They're just very lightweight questions about the show. I want to see how your personal experiences map to things. You can feel free to pass on any of them. I will not be offended, but I try to keep them very answerable. Let's go. All right. So first question, did you have any dinosaur toys growing up? Uh, some that I stole from my kindergarten, unfortunately, and I still feel bad about that. It's okay. Statue of limitations is up. I'm sure that you were a cute kid, so They probably would have been uh, happy with it, but uh, good to get it off your chest. <laughs> uh have you seen pixar's the good dinosaur i have not oh okay well it's actually probably one of their weakest but hey you know what it's it's, it's a dinosaur movie and it's pixar so it'll probably have something put it on my watch list and i'll make sure i stretch while i watch it there you go oh there you go We're incorporating the workout in what is your favorite jurassic uh series movie jurassic park the original that is a classic that is a classic and they keep bringing it back to theaters which is fun it's really fun to see it in theaters and kind of get that full experience again yeah, that, that horror aspect, you know, I love it. Yeah, exactly. Um, so when you were wrestling, did you have like a signature wrestling move? Yes, I like to do a handspring off the uh, off the ropes and uh, fall back into a cutter. I know that's not going to make sense to a lot of people, but it's a very uh, move. It's a very precise move that you have to like if you if there's if you're off by just an inch, it, it will look just totally messed up. So it's it's a very athletic a precision based move where you have to bounce off the ropes in a handspring form and then bounce back and do like an RKO but you have to catch your opponent's head and they have to also react correctly so yeah it's a, it's a whole thing yeah that sounds dangerous and very athletic and that sounds like a great move uh could you rename it to have like some sort of dinosaur theme like a pterodactyl pound i don't know i don't know what the what would be a dinosaur name for that move you know i guess i would have to because i was calling it the assassination but uh now that i'm a you know, I'm a dinosaur hunter. Uh, maybe the downward dino. I don't know. Because your head's going downward into the mat. In fact, I'm going to put your head through the mat with this move. There you go. Yeah. The downward dino. Let's there go. We go. There we go. I love it. Uh, what is the biggest dinosaur that you think that you could wrestle and win? It sounds like you are a, a good wrestler and very athletic. So is there a dinosaur that you think you could actually take in the ring? You know, if I could get behind a 40-foot T-Rex, that's all I need. I'll just I'll wring its I'll wring its neck with my with my arms and I'll just I'll choke I'll choke its life out. I don't care if it takes me ten years. I'm gonna I'm gonna hold on to that thing forever. And and he can't do anything with his little claws. He can't he can't actually do anything. So he'd be pinned. <laughs> exactly. There most people don't realize that. You know, how's it gonna? Once you're behind it, what well, he's gonna? He can't bite you. Okay. You're good. There you go. You got. The, if only you were in the original Jurassic Park, you would have solved everything. There would have been no problems. <laughs> you know, I was about three years old when that movie came out. Uh, if I were just a little bit older, I believe I would have been cast in. There would be no Jurassic Park or Jurassic World because that would have been the only film. I would have defeated all the dinosaurs. Exactly. And then, and then you wouldn't have this job. So I guess it's good that you were too young to kind of fix all those. Uh, and point. the last question is, what is your favorite dinosaur? Favorite dinosaur? I've got to say... I'm going to say the Troodon. Okay, describe it. Now, I don't, I don't if, know the Troodon, so. If you're not familiar with the Troodon, it's a, it's a new species of dinosaur, or it's not new itself, but we're introducing this to the Jurassic World series because what this is, so our show is canon, right? It takes place in between the first and second film. The Troodon is the smartest dinosaur. It's even smarter, uh, smarter than a Velociraptor, which is insane because they're already pretty damn smart. But when you put the uh, Troodon uh, up against like a stronger opponent it's gonna think its way through that it's gonna find a way because it's still strong it's still a killer but uh it, it just uses its brain more um so i think if you get a group of those together i think they will be able to take on any pack raptor that you can possibly toss at them so you are single-handedly you know bringing about our end to the dinosaurs a new rise of dinosaurs these troodons are probably going to take over be the next species but hey you know what? we've had a good run we'll see what they do we'll see we'll see how, <laughs> what the new world looks like with troodons in charge 
Uh, so the tour is coming to the DC area, March 23rd to 31st, 2024. You're out promoting it, getting ready for the show and also getting the word out. Um, where is it going next? Is there a place kind of in the future that you know that you're excited to go to, or are you just kind of excited to see where else this leads and experience new places? Um, I'm excited because after we leave the Ego Bank Arena uh, in Fairfax, we're going to be uh, taking a bit a bit of time off to see our families and uh, do all the stuff that we don't get to do all year. Um, but after that, we're going to be going to the great city of Mexico City. Oh, that's going to be awesome. That's going to be really cool. Yes, it is. Awesome. So excited about that. And also, I do love how this kind of just... This whole thing seems to be working out for you. You come to DC during cherry blossom time and then you get time off after. So you don't really even have to travel. Like it feels like you are planning this whole thing. You know, it would seem like the universe has my back. Uh, I had nothing to do with this. It just, things just happen in my favor. So I'll take it. Yeah, exactly. Don't, don't question it. Just enjoy it. Well, awesome. So you can uh, look for Ryan and the other Dynateers at Jurassic World Tour Live, which is coming to the Eagle Bank Arena in Fairfax, Virginia, from March 23rd to 31, 2024. This is Ryan Dodson, one of the Dynateers and sub performer. His uh, story is incredible, and I'm sure he will put on a wonderful show. I'm excited to see him in it, and I hope you see him as well. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, David. That was Ryan Dodson, a Dynateer and stunt performer for Jurassic World Live, which has been touring the world and is coming to DC at the Eagle Bank Arena on March 23rd to 31st, 2024. It is a show that recreates the world of the Jurassic series with 24 authentic sized dinosaurs. It has to be seen to be believed. I'm going to go see it and I'm very, very excited. I hope you do see it as well. And uh, maybe you'll think of Ryan while you're watching it. If you liked this interview, please like and subscribe to this channel. It helps me out a lot. Make sure all my new content goes straight to you. Thank you. Thank you.